Guilford County, February update, take three, action. Okay. On February 10th, 2020, Guilford County GOP had their February meeting. The meeting, as usual, started um, right on time, 7 o'clock. Had a very good turnout. Uh, there were maybe only less than 10 empty seats in the whole house. Probably a good 75 people were there. Uh, just about all the parking spaces in the front and back lot were taken, believe it or not. Um, and the convention began with Chairman David Gleason announcing that our state convention delegate allotment number, one that uh, counties hardly ever reach, except there was like Ash or Avery County a few years ago. They get like maybe five delegates, but we're a lot bigger. We get 368 delegates. Now, again, most counties do not max out their delegate allotment. Uh, two years ago, Guilford County had like 20 or 25 delegates. Last year was 53 delegates. That number went up significantly because there was a chairman's election. Uh, 2018 was a, uh, a non-election, inter-party election year. You know, Of course, we had the big midterms in November, but that was a, 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 um, a outer party or, or a, just a public election, what you call it. For everybody, uh, not just Republicans. But anyway, I thought to myself, 368 delegates, that's about how many students were in my entire elementary school in Preston Elementary in Preston, Maryland. Go Panthers! Class of 97 right here. Um, it was it, it was 368 or 375, I think it was less than, less than um, 400, I think was the number. But uh, probably the biggest news item that's that's breaking news, breaking fresh news here, by the way. The biggest news is that <clears throat> um, last year's district convention, I was in District 13 at the time. That district was um, the... Western part of Guilford County, western part of Greensboro, and then uh, Davidson, Davy, Iredell, uh, Rowan, um, and that whole group. Now, what happened was is uh, the courts for like the twenty seventh time this decade uh, threw out the congressional district maps. And the legislature was forced to redraw the maps. So what happened was, is now Guilford County is not split anymore. It is now in a one district, and that district is District 6, okay? Um, district 13 now gets Randolph and Davy Davidson, Rowan County. Alamance County then goes up to towards the Virginia border and gets Caswell and Person County, as well as the very conservative west edge of Chatham County. So that district is, uh, you know, both districts have changed dramatically, but District 6, the one I'm going to be in now, and this might be very short lived. Um, this might only last until. Um, Redistricting will start next year, okay, after the 2020 elections. Generally, by the end of 2021, we'll have new districts drawn. And they might say District 6 is fine, or they might change it again. Who knows? But at least for the next year or so, I will be in the 6th district instead of 13th district. And... The 6th district is now all of Guilford County. Guilford County used to be split between the 6th district and the 13th district. So the new District 6 is all of Guilford County. And the, um, the southern half 
of Forsyth County, or mostly the very liberal blue part of Winston-Salem uh, in Forsyth County. But the big news I want to tell you is that there's going to be a race for the chairmanship of District 6. Previously, Marcus Kinley announced that he would run for the 6th district seat. The um, Now, the 6th district did have a chairman, Lee Haywood, who's a great, great patriot. Great man, too. Um, but he decided to run for Congress, U.S. Congress. And unlike Florida politics, where you can be in the legislature and run the party at the same time, well, you don't even, don't even give me a start on that BS with Blazing Goyle. But in North Carolina, we actually have quality rules which say that you cannot be a county or district chair and be in elected office at the same time, or run for elected office. So Lee Haywood resigned from the 6th Congressional District, and now he's run for Congress in the 6th Congressional District against Laura Picardo. Um, now, running against Marcus Kinley is Tina Forsberg, and, and this, this is going to be a very, very tough decision for me because I really like... And I have a great deal of respect and admiration for both of these two people. Um, Marcus, um, back one of the very first conventions I went to back in 2011, Marcus Kinley was um, doing like a sort of a conservative tea party breakfast, I will say. Um, and he used to be chair of Guilford County back in the 2000s. In 2004, when he was chair, that was actually the last time that Guilford County went red in a presidential election year. Um, had a lot of experience, a lot of success fundraising and growing the party at that time. Tina Forsberg, um, any 13th district event, any state executive committee, any state central committee, She's there. She puts in a lot of time at the state party, a lot of time at the district party. So it would make sense for her to also seek this office of 6th district chair. Um, one thing I will say, maybe that maybe has me leaning a little bit towards Tina, is Tina is more um, if a Republican does something – you know, vote does takes a liberal position or votes liberally on something. She will actually attack that Republican. Okay, um, but Marcus Kinley, even though he, he he's had some um, good or was back earlier this decade uh, really involved with the Tea Party movement. Marcus has always, always been a big, huge um, fan, super fan of Tom Tillis, a loyalist for Tom Tillis. So this six congressional and, and and Tina Forsberg, um, one maybe flaw about her is she went really big for uh, Michael Watley in the chairman's race. And I, of course, voted for um, Jim Womack. Um, Marcus Kinley, I do not know who he voted for. Um, but anyway, um, Tina Forsberg handed out a, um, a little, uh, what you call, pamphlet or whatever uh, at the meeting tonight. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Uh, overview. Leveraging extensive leadership and financial experience within the party at various levels, Tina Forsberg has the vision, relationships, and skills to help establish the newly redrawn 6th Congressional District. As a mostly urban district, we must expand our reach into, the, into communities who share our conservative values but traditionally fail to vote with us. We are fortunate to have the foundation provided by Representative Mark Walker, 
upon which to build relationships into these communities. And this will be the top priority of the Forsberg-led 6th District. Inter Intergrade Forsyth and Guilford volunteers into a coordinated board will be another key focus. We are blessed to possess the passions, networks, and energy of hundreds of experienced Republican volunteers. The 6th District Convention, when this vote will take place, uh, is tentatively scheduled for Saturday, April 18th. I, I, I do not know the time. I don't know the location yet. But, of course, I will be there. It's my district now, and I have to, um, at this convention, resign from the 13th District Executive Committee and run for a spot on the 6th District Committee. I can't be in the 13th anymore because I've been redistricted out of that 13th. Um, there was a brief exchange tonight between Chairman Gleason and Gay Dillard, the chair of the 13th Congressional District, about how Guilford County is still in the 13th as well as the 6th. And that is true. Technically... These new districts do not take effect until after, until January of next year. But the party right now is trying, to, the state party is trying to make everything as easy as possible, as, as, you know, as trying to make everything flow as best they can. So they're like, as, you know, back in December, they said, like a few days after the legislature drew the districts and they were um, – and the court said okay for the districts, uh, the state party just said go go ahead and you know assume that you're, new, you're in your new district. Um, but uh, what's the name? Gil Gay Diller does have a point that technically uh, the new – well, actually uh, April is when the new officers, the Republican – inner party officers we pick in. Um, as far as congressional representation, that will not take effect until after the November 2020 election. It's a lot to digest, I know, but just have to put it out there. Okay, now Chris Meadows, first vice chair, spoke about the Lincoln Reagan Day dinner scheduled for Sunday, March 8th at the Sedgefield Country Club. Now, I will tell you this. I believe the ticket price is a hundred bucks. Uh, I generally do not go to these dinners. It's very fancy. You have to dress up. You have to pay hundred bucks, and I'm just I don't do that kind of thing. No, not for me. But I will tell you that they're desperately looking to sell tickets. They've only sold as of today twenty two tickets, but the venue can hold. They want to sell two hundred forty. The guest speaker is going to be Congressman Dan Bishop, who represents the 9th District that covers the counties from east of Charlotte to uh, just west of, just a little east of Fayetteville to Bladen County, Elizabethtown. Okay. At our county convention on March 7th, we're going to vote on new change to the plan of organization. This was presented by Paul Daniels, third vice chair. Paul also wanted to mention that this Saturday we're going to – and they've been doing this like every other Saturday since the beginning of the year. But they're also going to do it this Saturday to register people to vote. They're going to start at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, You know, have breakfast, have bagels at the headquarters, and then attend, you know, train people on the phone app to f identify people to vote, register to vote. Go door to door from 10 to 2, then come back to the headquarters and have pizza. So I think I have to work during that time. But if that's something that interests you, uh, the Guilford County GOP is at 5500 West Friendly Avenue in Greensboro. And their headquarters is in the back of that office building, 5500 West, Guilf West Friendly Avenue. Uh, Paul Daniels says it's important to register voters because... Barack Obama registered 250,000 new voters in 2008, and Republican registration since 2004 election has flatlined in Virginia. 
and so Virginia is now a blue, dark blue state. Okay. Next, we heard from Victoria King. That's Sebastian's lady, Sebastian King's wife. Uh, Victoria is a young 24-year-old, very energetic, very passionate about politics. She says her goal is she wants to turn Guilford County red, and she is now the new social media coordinator. Um, our friend Alyssa Batts has decided to uh, – resigned – Last month as second vice chair and social media coordinator, so Victoria now will be filling that role. Alyssa is now national um, committee woman for the young Republicans representing North Carolina, so she's taken that task head on. That is a very hefty commitment. Um, requires a lot of time, a lot of travel, so we definitely wish her the best of luck with that. Um... Uh, but Victoria's goal, she wants to start a new YouTube account for the party. And after the primary is over, she wants to produce 10-minute videos for all the Republican candidates that are running for the general election. Okay, now we have candidates time. Woohoo! Okay. First off, the dish is Jason Davis running for D District 6 County Commission. Hey, that's my district. <gasps> Ooh, uh, uh, this district, by the way, is very heavily gerrymandered. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. It, it, if you look at it on a map, it looks like a dragon. I'm at the head of the dragon. I'm right in the uh, northwest Greensboro, just north of the airport. It goes all meanders all the way down I-73 and all the way down to Jamestown, then northern part of High Point. Jason Davis served seven years on the High Point City Council, and unfortunately, he lost last year in the um, city election, and he lost his seat by six votes. Yeah, it's one thing to lose an election, but when you're six votes short, that that's really, ugh. Um, I remember uh, 2012 congressional election down in Wilmington between Mike McIntyre, incumbent and Democrat, and Dave Rouser, the Republican challenger. And then McIntyre beat Rouser by, it was what, three, 350 votes. And that was, there's a lot of talk about that. A lot, a lot of wow. So, he's 355 votes short and went six votes short. That's a real stinger. Next, we have Craig Horn, Representative Craig Horn from Union County, who is running for the state superintendent. That's the, um, uh, what you call it, the commissioner of public instruction. Uh, he has chaired the Education Committee and Legislature for four out of his five terms in the legislature. Uh, as a military vet, his top priority is school safety. Um, the Department of Education North Carolina is a $20 billion, that's billion with a B, departments. Um, $1.6 million is how many students are enrolled in the public schools K-12 through in North Carolina. It's a lot of kids. Ninth largest state. And within the next 10 years, we're on pace to be the seventh largest state uh, by population in the U.S. Uh, there was a concerned citizen who mentioned uh, some activities taking place at Graham Middle School in, in uh, Burlington, out Alamance County. Uh, that there were two classes that did not have teachers, and the students were in the class gambling, throwing dice, and taking clothes off and laying on top of each other. Ugh, wow. Okay. Ronald Pierce. This is at least his second, maybe even third trip to Guilford County. So, right off the bat, I want to salute Ronald Pierce for that, for actually coming, driving from Charlotte. From He lives in, like, south-central Charlotte, too. So, yeah. Like, wow. Uh, drove all this way to speak to Guilford County. We salute him. Um, 
He says that the insurance companies run the Department of Insurance. What should happen is the 100 people, uh, the rate bureau in North Carolina is employed by 100 people should run the Department of Insurance, not the insurance companies. The insurance companies, unfortunately, bypass the rate bureau uh, because the current insurance commissioner, according to Ronald Pierce, is very weak. Um, Mike Causey at the forum, candidate forum in Charlotte last Saturday, uh, says insurance rates are low, but Ronald Pierce tonight accused uh, Causey of lying and said they are not low. Uh, a lot of insurance rates have gone up. He says his insurance has gone up like 40%. Um, and Ronald Pierce said, look, if you want to vote for a status quo, go ahead, but you're going to pay for it. Um, he says he makes more money as a general contractor than he would as insurance commissioner. So to me, that sounds like he really wants the job and he wants to actually be, you know, help people. And he's not just in it for the fame and the, you know, the government bureaucrat perks. You know what I mean? Chris Meadows, House 57, no primary. Um, talked about how radical the local Dems are. Yeah, they are radical. Pricey, Pricey Harrison. Oy, oy, oy. Skip Alston. Oy. Anyway, Larry Holmquist run for U.S. Senate against Tom Tillis, the Republican. Yeah, Republican trying to unseat an incumbent Republican. Mr. Holmquist been an activist since the year 2000. Uh, he was the campaign manager for Commissioner County Commissioner Guilford County Jeff Phillips in 2012. Got him elected. 2014, Jeff Phillips ran for U.S. Congress, and Larry Holmquist served as his campaign manager. In 2016, Larry Holmquist ran for the U.S. Senate against Richard Burr. Uh, uh, Holmquist made three promises tonight. He's a consistent defender of the Constitution, consistent supporter of Trump, and a consistent conservative. He said, you will know how I vote ahead of time. He, he will always cut because he will always take the most conservative position. He has a homemade website and he typed every word on the website. And he did not outsource it to any web developer because he wanted to have better people to see and better transparency in that process. Okay. And Catherine Truitt ran for also uh, Secretary of Public Instruction. Uh, the same thing Craig Horn is running for. This is an open seat because of the current uh, Rep Republican State Superintendent Mark Johnson is running for Lieutenant Governor along with eight other candidates in that race. Uh, Catherine Truitt's a former teacher, and then she served as Senior Education Advisor to Pat McCrory, Governor at the time. Uh, and she said so much gets pushed down from Raleigh to the classroom. She says she's running on three main issues. She said 65% of 4th graders and 65% of 8th graders cannot read at their grade level and also 65 percent eighth graders can't do math at their grade level big problems the colleges of education at these universities are not teaching them proper teaching methods and the universities are also not graduating enough skilled workers she said the economy in north carolina cannot grow without having enough skilled workers and among adults 25 to 44, only 49% have post-high school diploma. She also mentioned the Western ed Education, the AKA Leandro case, and says that uh, the Democrats and the plaintiff in that Leandro case think North Carolina should spend $8 billion, $8 billion just on education over the next eight years. That is not sustainable. I mean, <laughs> only 6% of teachers are represented by the North Carolina Teachers Union. Yeah, the media, <clears throat> especially WRAL in Raleigh, would like you to believe that it's like 100% of teachers, but no, only 6% are represented by the Teachers Union, thankfully. But... Six, the teachers' union is very influ influential, and they 
really banging this drum. Teachers are not being paid enough, even though the Republicans have given them seven straight years of pay raises. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, and she also wants to get rid of the federal part of education. Uh, she also says we need to watch the curriculum of the local school board very closely because oftentimes the curriculum is of the local school board is a lot more dangerous than the what comes out of Raleigh. This is also her first time run for office. Uh, then we had Sebastian King run for the state senate district twenty seven. She said, he said, we're one vote shy of supermajority in the North Carolina Senate. Why is that important? Well, if they had one more vote, they'd be able to pass a budget, right? Michael Garrett's the, and by the way, this is my Senate district. And unfortunately, I have Michael Garrett, a do-nothing Democrat, in that particular seat. Um, a few days ago, uh, Sebastian was at a jobs um announcement at PTI Airport and these jobs are going to pay 70000 a year. Well, Michael Garrett was MIA. He, uh, Mr. King is also a big fan of Opportunity Zones and School Choice and he said Donald Trump only lost the Senate District by point tenth of 1%. He says we need more small business owners and less lawyers in politics. I completely agree with that 100%. Uh, Mr. King is a small business owner. He owns Triad Golf Today magazine, and that's expand, getting ready to expand to Charlotte area. He holds a degree in political science from Texas A&M, graduating from the Bush School of Government. Then we have Michelle Bardsley running for the school board. And she's a teacher, but she teaches actually in Wake County. She used to be in Guilford County, but she got so fed up with these bureaucrats, the local school board. So now, but now she says she wants to come back on the school, uh, into Guilford County, the school board member and fight for teachers. She wants to expand uh, career technology education at every high school. And she says that one of the most appalling things she saw was in a Guilford County school just last week where they had a poster of a construction worker, okay, working this big high rise. And on the poster, it had a saying that said, you don't want to end up here. And that's completely disrespectful because let me tell you something, the trades education a lot of these trades, construction, welding, what have you, air conditioned, high back, they actually pay more than a person who goes to college for four years and, you know, comes out of college, 100000 in debt or what have you, and works as a business professional, something like that. It's crazy. Um, Barsley currently has no opponent in the primary, no opponent in the general, but she said, beware, there is a... Uh, Democrat who's trying to pose the unaffiliated voter and gain a lot of signatures in that race. And then we have Troy Lawson, uh, District 5 County Commissioner. If that name sounds familiar, he was the last chair of Guilford GOP, and he also ran for state legislature. Education is his number one issue. That's what we heard from the voters, too. Uh, $2 billion proposal being floating out there. Um, he said Page and Grimsley hire just terrible schools. Terrible condition, he said. Terrible build conditions. Not necessarily the teachers, he said. Terrible build conditions. He has a rhino in the primary who wants to raise taxes for the schools, and she is very eager to work with the Democrats. And uh, he said, a uh, person had a question, and he said that they do control the sheriff's office budget. And then we have Mr. John Faircloth. He's running for his sixth term, believe it or not. He has no primary, and um, I got to tell you, John Faircloth is my current House representative. <sighs> He's an older guy. He's pushing 80. I try to give him a chance, but I'm just not really a fan of his. Um, he voted for gun control. He voted against uh, Dale Falwell on the Health Care Transparency Cost Act. And he gave the same old story on appropriations that he gave a year and a half ago, which is also the last time I saw him at a Guilford County GOP meeting. So, yeah, not a big fan of his. And then we have John Hardister, who 
John Harster always does a good job of doing a nice, you know, general fire up the troops speech. And finally, we adjourned at 8.27 p.m. Well, I gotta go. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.